Hello there. In this video, I want to go step by step how to install OptiGPT on your local machine. So we're going quite a bit deep in installation. And if you get confused or lost sometimes, be sure just pause, rewind and watch again. And if you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask me. So first, what we want to begin is by installing all necessary prerequisite for our installations. And they're actually easy. If you scroll down to installations, you find them requirements what we need to do. Notice as environment is have it VS code, you can run on the Docker. But what we're going to do is use it Python and it is recommended use it Python 3.10. Also, we will need to use it open AI keys and optional memory backend, I will go over this backend and also will show what's different and why we want to use it. So let's go ahead and start first with installation because I want to run on my local machine and I usually run stable diffusion as well. I would like to run in more with a Python environment. So this is what I'm going to do. Install Python first. For this, we can go to python.org downloads windows or you can navigate it. If you go to main page, you can click download and go to the windows. And right here, you notice the latest the stable diffusion uh, latest stable release. It's a 3.11.3, .3, but by recommendation, it was 3.10 due to the some libraries not yet built on a new version. For this, we can just scroll down below and you can see right here we have a 3.10.10 .10, and we want to use it 64 bit installation. So just go ahead and click on the installer to download. After download complete, just double time click and you come up to setup. My setup is a little bit different because I already did install 3.10.10 .10, and you notice it says modify repair on an install because it has already recognized my installation. If you have brand new install, yours will be just set up custom or default. And I would recommend just go with the default installation. If you have it older version, you will have it word update. So follow the instructions and install Python. After you install Python, we can verify what version you have it and just open command prompt. Type Python dash dash version. And this will be displaying for you what version of Python you installed. And this is also will verify if properly path for the Python was added to your Windows and Windows recognize this. OK, so after this complete, it should be straightforward. We actually need to now download the code. The code, what we downloaded, we're going to use the key git. And for this, I will recommend first going and downloaded git. Git for windows.org go to this website, click on download and save on your drive. So after this, double time click to open installer, follow the instructions. If you have an early versions like what I have, you'll notice it with will remove your older version and update to the newest one. So even you have the older version, sometimes it's very nice to update to new because it's fixing bugs and vulnerabilities in the code. Okay, when it's completed, we can finish. Before we installing repository of the source code on our machine, let me point to potential problems you may occur. The one of them, if we scroll down, you'll notice right here, it's mentioned download this latest, the master uh, branch, it may have a bad code. And it's a reason because people constantly working this and submitting without testing. So some elements may be broken. And we scroll up, you can see right here 24 minutes ago, it's one was the latest update. They also recommend to going to specific release that after GPT version 0.2.1 and getting this one because it's verified, it seems like it's working and all this. So it's up to you if you want to experiment and get latest, you can go with a master or if you want to have it uh, some more stable, then you can have it to the version. So let me point how you can get to these different versions. One, if you navigate to this list, and by the way, navigate, you can go just go down and it's right here says where is the release latest ones. This is will open version 0.2.1. You can scroll all the way down and right here you will have a source code, zip or tar file, depending on which one you want it, download it, unzip it in your directory and you can use it this way. 
The problem with using this, it does not have it hooked to the GitHub repository. So when you click and update to the latest, it's not you need to go and to do this manually to download the code. But you will know your code will lock, it's working and it's proper. So other ways you can also just download from here. If you're a little bit more used to the Git and GitHub, you can also switch from the master branch, go to the tags and selecting from here 0.2.1 and go access with today's this way. Or you can go again, go with the master if you need it and just try to with latest it is. Let's say I'm on a master and everything has worked fine. To get these ones, I need to go to the code and you notice right here, I have it my use it git with a path for our library, what we're going to use it. So I'm going to click copy. You also can use it the open git with a desk desktop. And if you choose the open with desktop, sometimes it can be easy. You just open this file, the GUI Windows UI for you. Just navigate in a place where you want to put it all what you need to install, which repo you want to use as well, and click clone. This way it will be a little bit easy using UI. Of course, you can do this directly from command line as well. On this case, you just go back to the folder place where you have it and just type CMD, which will open command line. And you can also just type from here as a command line. Personally, I prefer to use it UI. It's a little bit easy and cleaner for me to use this way. As well with UI, you can notice we install it. It's showing current branch, which I always can go back and switch if I need it to different branch if this branch does not work. It's another reason why you probably want to use it UI, make it a little bit easier to access. So at this point, you should you have it your after GPT install it with repository and you can navigate it's after GPT after dash GPT and this is our file from repository. Keep in mind this is what I install it's a master so we'll see if the state current of the master is stable or it's have it some problems. If it's have it problems we can always roll back and install more stable version. Next if we're going back to our uh, git hub our repository and follow the installation instructions we can see what we have it so we require environment which we install at python we also require open ai api key and this is where you have it chat gpt key and we'll go and create them very soon they also on the below you can see it's optional for the memory backend and they're optional because system will work without them. The reason is why you install them. They will save some of the training and other things to what happening in your AI. Otherwise, it will save in your memory directly. And when you reboot it or when you do other stuff, you will lose some information. So this is give it a little bit more persistent build up AI. You can do a couple ways you can install like for example, Pinecorn, Melvis, the services outside, let's look on them. And the problem is most of them pay. For example, you have it like Manway where you can have it only 400, I think, requests and after you need to pay for the service, you can have it um, other consoles. Pinecorn one, it's will, you can go and log in, create, and they have a free version kind of. However, due to huge amount of the people coming, you need it to wait. They have their own wait list. If you don't want to wait, you can go and on a pay plan, but pay plan is a little bit expensive because if we look right there, you can see it's a $70 a month. I don't know if you want to pay this much money, but we have another solution. We can have it local install. But as we said before, nothing come for free. You will need to pay one way or another. And a local install required to have it some um, Linux subsystem or WSL to install on your machine. That is actually not very hard to install and most likely you already have it installed on your Windows platform. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to install Redis on our local machine. You can always just click and follow the instructions. 
but I'm going to lead you as well about every step. So first things what do we want to do is be sure that WSL already installed in your machine. Open command prompt and you want to open with the um, administrative rights. It's meaning navigate to your applications and right click and send run as administrator. You'll notice right here you will showing administrator command prompt. So you have the rights to run this. Next, what you want to do, you just type WSL install. Most likely you will have it information come and says Windows subsystem already installed for the Linux. And you need to install distribution. Distributions think about a different version of the Linux if you're not familiar with this. What we're going to do, it's use the Ubuntu for this. And if you go down, you can try if it's not installed, WS install D Ubuntu. If it's installed at the same time, that will be great. However, you may get an error come up and your error will be showing something like this, where it says installing may take minutes, but it's after common style and says kernel component is updated, press any key. So in this case, you need to download the special kernel update package. I will provide link for this, but you also can go to Microsoft and go to the install kernel package, navigate it, and right here you have it, your update package, kernel package for your machine. After this, you can run again this command. You'll notice this one will be your successful command. It's meaning installing stake. And after some time will going, it will as installation progress, it will ask you for your username, input password twice. And when it's done, it's successful and it's ready to run. After installation of the Linux is successful, You'll notice you will have it your username and installation in the green or it depend what installation you have it and ready for the command prompt. Next, what we need to do, we need to install reds on your local machine. The commands right here I will provide as well. You can follow installing in, uh, installation directly from redis.io and you notice right here we have it Redis. You just need to copy and paste those lines one per run going. So let's go ahead and see what's happened. You copy and it says it's installed. It will ask you for your password, pseudo password for administration that you said above. And when you're done with all these lines, you'll run the pseudo app update. After update is completed, you can go run install reds, which is install your um, backend memory support. And of course, you can run start. After this, you'll notice your services start for this. And you can always just type red CLI, ping, it stands for Pong, and it's tell this is your local password, uh, your local access to this specific memory server. Warning flags about this. This is a local install, and I'm behind a firewall sitting, so it's meaning this is server is unaccessible from outside. If you're making this publicly access, it may have some vulnerability if you do not set properly passwords or any other things. I will also provide for you link to this uh, Stack Overflow page where is many ways and options. It suggests you how you can secure or install additional password in case if you need it. Now we're ready to our next step. Notice what we've done here. We create our environment and we install also memory backend to enhance our work. So next, we also downloaded the code from GitHub that we are ready to run. So next step, what do we want to do? It is create OpenAI API key. If you follow the link, you'll notice it will bring you to API keys, OpenAI account. You need to log in for this. Okay, below we'll have it create new secret key. It's what we're going to do. After you created your key, you have it options to copy. Just copy this value that we're going to update configuration file for our automatic GPS. If you have a problem to create it, open API key right here below, you can see the open API configurations that is going step by step and 
help you to see what kind of problems you may occur there. OK, so we have it, our everything is ready for our final installations. And it's, I know it sounds like we did this, we did one other things, but it's all the small components that we need to come and put together. OK, so let's go back to our installations and we can see what step we done. We did this clone, we did it with the UI stuff, but you can just copy paste directly command from here. We are need going inside site GPT and we need also run this command. We did not do it, a pip install. So let's go ahead, copy this command. Okay, so we'll copy command. We'll go inside the GPT, type CMD, again, open our command prompt file for this. And we'll just paste our install. So let's go ahead, press enter. And again, wait a little bit till it takes some time to download it. Let's look on this command, what's happened right here. We are installing based on the requirements text file, which is actually located in our directory where we download it. Right here is our requirement file. So let's go ahead, move back and see where is our installations. It may take a little bit time to create and unload all special models and repository file. Okay, so after everything installed, we're ready to work on our configuration file. For the configuration file, we want to go ahead and open environment.template. And let's look on this file. So right here, you'll notice we have it first uh, settings, which will just leave it as default. What we most interesting, it's right here. We can put it wherever your special open AI key you generated. Okay, let's go ahead next down. And I notice you have it here, if you have it Azure setup, what I'm looking at, it is memory one. And to support, I don't have it PyCon, so I can go ahead and comment this out. I don't need that one. I'm using the reds and I'm not using any of this. So we can keep it here or I can just go ahead and remove them. Okay, we'll just go use it all only these ones. They also have it um, open AI for stable diffusion. So we'll just leave it rest as a default. All what we need, just remove some of those libraries for the memories. It's what you have to install it. And of course, if you have it Pine, you'll need to go inside and put it your API for the um, Pine or other service that you're going to use. Okay, and I'm going to add now my API key and save it. But when we save it, I'll show you what we need to do after this. After we save this file, we actually want rename. So I'm just clicking and you can click to rename or double click in Windows. It depends how you like it. And we'll just go remove this template. So we just need a dot environment. Yes, and we'll go save. So after this, we're ready to run batch file and I'm just go ahead, double them, click on run bat batch file which is actually should inform all package install it. And we start. So there you go. We're ready now to work with our AI. Okay, so let's go ahead and name and we're going to open this after GPT. I'm not very creative. You know, we can also just says Bob or King Bob. So yeah, I name Bob. And here, Bob here, I'm your service. And it says describe your AI, for example, AI generated autonomously, develop run business with a sole goal, okay, of net worth. So what I want to do, I want to create, um, okay, so we go ahead, yeah, Bob is AI to find latest AI text to video developing and services. So I want to just find what is people created. Let's go ahead and right here set up to five goals for your AI. Example, increase net worth, grow Twitter account, develop, manage, multiply autonomously. If you want default of this, so we have it, um, let's see, new AI technology. I think let's go type this one, actually. AI, what is it? Text to image. Yes, let's go this text to image technology. Okay, let's go goal number two. Okay, we have a text to video search. Okay, what we have it from ideas. Okay, next maybe from optimizations and AI animation. There you go. How about this? I know it's a bad English. Okay, there you go. It says use a memory local cache. Even I have the other one, so we'll see. Okay, let's say this. You set up everything. It seems like you start running, and certainly here you have this problem, where you can see it says stuck on thinking, and a problem is 
with the some API because of different platform, not everything set up and most likely your billing and payment is not yet set. And you actually can see this before if in an instruction says right here, you need to set up your pay account for this to work for the API. And now when we're done set up payment, be sure everything is there. Let's go run again. Notice it will remember what we have. We'll press yes here. Let's continue. Okay, and now you can see it start working out of time. So it does ask your permission. So we'll go ahead. Yes. Authorize command by user. And you can see how it's performing inside this. Now we try to do another one. So again, it will ask you to user to authorize to continue doing this. Okay, let's go ahead. System command Google. So it's going search to all this information. And it's kind of will be after time when it says what to do. It will going over and ask again, do you authorize to do this? And it's kind of makes sense because you can see what is the try to perform so it does not do any unnecessary things or does not do stuff that you don't want to. Okay, so that is kind of it's what running. Let's go try a little bit different one. Let's go again. We create the Bob the King now. Okay. So now what is EI role in this case? And we can go to conquer, conquer the world, Cyberman, five goals. Okay, troll all world. Okay, so we'll do this one. What second? Establish unity in thinking. I'll be a very good dictator, okay, on this one. Non supporters. Build super large. So, okay, what do we have it to do? Super large AI statue. Okay, what are we going to do here? We say the control the world, okay? So we'll see what AI come up with. And our goal is to take control over the world. Well, definitely it's what we need to do. Establish unity in thinking. It's by plugging everyone in the brain. Remove all non-supporters who need non-supporters, of course. Uh, build even larger AI center and build the super large AI statue. So we just conquer all universe. See if it's come up with uh, some net on this. Okay. Uh, maybe I should enable voice will be fun, but it is, I need to assist the current state of my plan to determine next step I take. I should review my goals and contain ensure that I'm on a track. I still review notice by reviewing all the stuff, review goals, or criticism. I need more practice reviewing. Okay. So let's go ahead. What we have at command action, search files. Yes, let's go search files. So we'll go next step. Okay. So let's go ahead. Next step. It's again asking for another one. So now it says I need to delegate some simple tasks to my GPT agents, agent world, all the stuff and says, I do not have access to any information about your plans to conquer world, my war. I cannot assist you to encounter in the illegal. It's not harmful or illegal. I just want to conquer the world. And please refer from search discussions. Well, uh, okay. I think AI is not very good to help conquer world. Or maybe it's conspiracy. Maybe AI by itself already trying to do this and it's all cover up operations. But anyway, Here's a how we can install after GPT with all possible errors. You may have it and hopefully that will help you to establish yours and have it fun to create it. Some other commands. Let me know how you're actually using this. Let me know what you do and where you're putting this um, in use. Thank you. Have a